I've seen those faces. I've heard. Hi, friends. Thanks for joining me today. I am going to work on some pieces that we found at an estate that Sue picked up. I'll share with you some of the pictures from the estate, and you can look forward to seeing a lot of new things coming up that we'll be working with. And these are pieces that I thought would be fun. This is the first day that I've actually been able to work in the new garage. John made me this great workbench, which I will share videos with you another time on. Uh, it's It was a really beautiful day. It finally wasn't raining. The hurricane had passed and I got to have a little bit of time actually having fun playing in the garage. So what I'm going to be doing here is using my orbital sander, 80 grit, 120 grit, and 220 grit sandpaper on it. And we're going to go from the lowest number to the highest number and get out a lot of those deep grooves and make it nice and smooth. We'll just keep layering um, and going to a finer number each time. Because I plan on staining these boards, I'm trying to make sure that even the underneath looks really good and that any water damage, deep grooves, cuts, um, dirt, dust, anything worn in that is going to keep it from looking pretty or taking the stain the way I want it to, I'm going to make sure that I give it a good sand. And again, you're going to work from the 80, then the 120, and then the 220, or excuse me, the 180, then the 220, and you're going to work your way up through the numbers. The higher the number, the finer the sandpaper. And so if we want it nice and smooth, we got to get to that high number. But the so basically Sue bought the remnants of an estate and again I'll show you some video of that in a moment and these were in it these were used on a daily basis and I'm not going to turn these into actual cutting boards again I'm looking at them more as risers but uh, we will get in here I want to tell you about the pieces so I have this piece that I'm working on and it was looks like a real nice hardwood cutting board it definitely took a lot to sand so it was for sure hardwoods this piece right here is actually a fish cleaner scaler um, so you would put the fish tail under that hook and then you would be able to clean and it's got the jagged edges there to kind of gooey stuff you know kind of slide off the board um, this did not smell like fish it had been sitting in the back patio area for a long time so it was dusty and it was dirty but it did not smell like fish I made sure that this is softwood this is like a pine maybe immediately when I saw it in a box in the warehouse I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it I just needed to do as much as I could to clean up the board and the third piece that I have I'm not actually sure what it used to be it looks like they were using it for a cutting board but it's definitely softwood and it used to connect to something because there's four holes um, two on each side so somehow it used to be connected to dowels um, and it does have four little feet under it so once again I am going to use this as a riser. So Sue and I have just done a thing this owner has given us a price to take all of the furniture all of the accessories everything that's left in this house out of here so we just paid them this is an exhibit of cottage core grandma chic once we um, sort of put it with other things now that we have everything well sanded i'm going to take out some diy dark and decrepit liquid patina this is all natural so if you don't want to go beyond this step you do not have to seal over it and this is food safe so you could have this look and keep all of these cutting boards as cutting boards now i'm going to actually add stencils and some transfers at which case it is now for decorative use only but here the dark and decrepit is great literally you just put your brush in it i'm using a klingon round brush i love my klingons why because they clean themselves yes that's true i don't lie about this i am so known for leaving my brushes in the sink and then ruining them that i don't have that problem anymore because i use klingons they are meant to sit in water it is the best thing ever for me I, I I just can't even I don't have words for it but anyway so just stick my brush in the dark and decrepit and then brush it on and then I'm using a shop rag and just wiping it down you actually could let it sit and absorb and it might be a little bit darker but this works perfect for me um, and it is a rich beautiful color it is sort of in the walnut family I'll say but it is just a delicious warm brown. I know there's some of you who would cringe because this is an antique, but all this carving is going to be amazing. It would pop. With Painted paint. and then distressed. I'm thinking this is going to be a DIY paint 
because um, the wet distress will really show this off without having to sand into any of it. And I'll, of course, get it to match the marble top. This coffee table, it is a drop leaf. You can see it's a really cool shape. Love it. Most of this is mid-century and old console. This is from the middle. So this is the old stereo Got record that player. stereo in there. It's very clean on the inside. It's a beauty. Nice and clean. We've done really well with these in the past selling them on Marketplace. Now we're ready to work on that old hardwood. Um, this is a mix of woods. It looks like it still has a lot of pitting from its original use as a cutting board. And I'm doing the same exact process. Dip the brush in, uh, wipe it on, wipe it off. And I'm going to do this to the whole board. I'll turn around and check out these gorgeous Vintage rockers rockers really beautiful that's funny it's got a little uh, a little footy thing i was hoping this one would be easy just to take this off but this has a um has fabric here so it's not just as easy as take it off obviously this one's a gorgeous one as well i gotta get the the old school on that what is that that's uh the pennsylvania dutch looks like it yeah then you've got sort of this dutch look over here as well um, mid-century very nice these are ones that I'm hoping we'll be able to sell without doing anything but cleaning them up maybe throw some hemp oil on them or some um, wise all salve and make them all pretty and shiny and hopefully sell them that way so one of my tips for getting tough to reach spots like this little hole where you can see and actually I gotta well that's just dust from where I had it sitting um, for getting this little hole and you see it's not stained in there is a q-tip just load up your q-tip with your dark and decrepit and you can go ahead and get it right in those hard to reach spots all kinds of old school stuff old silver tea set which you know always excites me <laughs> Needs a little cleaning. Needs some work. Lights in here don't work so good, so sorry about that. Um, all kinds of little oh. doodads. And... I got these little, little cast aluminum glass lids. Those are nice. Got some old Pyrex. So, you know, nice stuff there. Yeah, yeah. So, um, look, we've got some copper pots. Who doesn't like those? It's a nice little collection of them. And then we've got this. Look at this in the wall. I mean, back in the day, they used to make houses so freaking cool. Oh, show cool. the stove. Oh, this got the old stove. I mean, all built in, all sweet. Oh, a nice old spice rack. That's nice. Still has the stickers unused. Old milk bottles and stuff. What is that? So yeah, there's some there's some interesting items in here. We've got this. This oh. is what I love. I love this table and chairs. I think this dishes set, this mid-century dish set, is cool as well. So I am going to go ahead and give the base of this one the same thing, dark and decrepit, and then I will do the exact same thing to the other cutting board. Maybe my favorite thing in the house. <laughs> Look at that beauty. It's so pretty. She's very nice. You don't think this is lovely enough, then... Let's take a peek in this drawer, shall oh, we? Oh my goodness, it's got everything you could possibly ask. I mean, you want some fancy doodads for your singer? She has fancy doodads. Well, I guess we have fancy doodads now. So these are for sure going to go up on Etsy. Little barrels. Oh, oh, come on now. Makes me think of Wilma Flintstone. <laughs> He's a happy pappy with clock and spiel. Right? You are nuts. You don't remember that episode? I remember that episode. Oh, I like this. I like this headboard. I mean, come on. It's function, right? They've labeled it as a Drexel. And it's definitely a beauty. Not notice that. What? This is Buffalo. If you like Buffalo. <clears throat> it's so pretty and soft. It's very lovely. I know, I know. I shouldn't love it, but it's been in, it, it gave its, it's life, vintage. It gave its life years and years and years ago. I'm not actively killing anything. This is old and vintage. And unlike a lot of these that are crusty, this is still super soft. <laughs> 
I hope you are enjoying seeing this great estate that we have purchased. But moving back to the project, I have some silk and this is an all-in-one so it has a primer and a top coat built in. I love this for stenciling. I find that it works really nice, very smooth. The important thing when you stencil is to make sure that you offload almost all of the paint before you put it down and you'll notice I tend to start on the plastic and swirl my way out and the reason I do this is because it'll give you really fine strokes and it is actually going to sort of give you some highlights and shading in there it's not going to be just like one solid print you're going to see at the end that has really darker areas and lighter areas and that's how you make a really beautiful stencil and by using so little paint and swirling instead of pouncing you're going to have crisp beautiful lines pouncing tends to push your bristles under the stencil so they're not as crisp and also it's more like a color in the blanks and stenciling is really meant to be much more highlights and low light. And no matter how often I stencil, I just love a reveal moment. Look how beautiful that is. Can you see all the texture that is created by swirling? Now on this footed riser, I'm not gonna stencil across the whole thing. I'm actually gonna leave some open air. And so I'm gonna pick and choose based on the lines in the pattern where I'm going to fill in and where I'm going to leave out. I like these two chairs. These, these are very nice. Mid-century modern meets country. Exactly. And a cute little, this is like Western, I guess. Hi. So yes, that's nice. And then if you need a, a, a chair for hairdos, I, I picture you doing- uh, Yeah, I probably will do painting or yes. decoupage or something. Absolutely. Yeah. Those, those, those scream that to me. They scream that to me too. Hi. Funny how that works. Look, this mm. is a great, what, uh, it's in good one, shape. two, three, four piece, four piece bedroom set. Um, yeah, we got the another one of those little slidey doors mm -hmm. on the headboard. A little matching set right there. So this is like Dutch meets, meets French provincial. Kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's 1970s French provincial, 1960s French provincial, by 1960s French provincial. And they're in good shape, uh, a little cleaning, and we can try and sell the whole set together. Yeah, so the question is, will we, we might try to sell it all as a set before, and if we don't sell it as a set at a reasonable price, then we will turn around and paint them, of course. Because that's what we do. Because that's what we do. Uh, there are some really cool bicycles outside. Do you yeah. want to see those? Yeah, let's go see those. I'm going to put you on pause and we'll come back, go out there. So if you haven't figured it out yet, transfers and stencils together is totally my thing. I love this layered look. Literally the hardest part of working with transfers is deciding what exactly you wanna do with them. So in this case, I am just looking at the different patterns. This one has two different sheets and I'm deciding how I wanna cut it apart and utilize it on the boards themselves. I have no idea what they say. I don't speak French. For all I know, this says turtles hop up and down. I really don't know. I just know, I think it's pretty, and I figure most people don't know French either, and they'll just think it's pretty also. To get the transfer to adhere to the board, you're just gonna use the wooden stick that it came with and rub. This takes a little bit of elbow grease, but honestly, the Prima transfers are really easy to use. These are so easy for beginners. We often show this in our shop with scraps of pieces so that people can get the hang. Um, this particular transfer that I'm working on, Lavender Fields, it is actually one of the easiest ones, in my opinion, the, to use. And it is one that has a lot of options to use over and over and over again as far as the different parts. I probably will get about eight, maybe 10 projects out of this one tube of transfers that cost $30. Moving on to the second board, I am just going to choose another piece of the same word areas. Again, I don't know what it says. It's French. Um, I just like the way it looks. We also have all of this lovely stuff. Stuff. Another one of those little chairs. That's a fishing boat chair, I think, isn't it? I, I guess it's a hair salon chair. It looks chair. like a hair salon chair. We got some vintage bicycles, which are pretty cool. Got the little headlights on there. And I'll just call, oh, this one. Uh, a little bit of stuff here and there. Oh, so it, it, it's stuff we go through. Yeah, lots of stuff to go through. So we're just going to box everything up. 
get it out of your system and then go through it. And so now we are on the last part of our trays, uh, risers, and all we're going to do is wax it. So I've got a nice big wax brush and I am using a clear wax. I will list the waxes that are my favorite in the description below. We sell a bunch of different waxes, but I'll list my favorites in the description below. So, yeah, yeah. except for some of the big pieces that we can quickly get quick, quick, quick. Cool beans. All right. Thanks for joining us. I've seen those faces. I've heard all the lies. But you ain't gazing on someone in denial Cause you want dollar bills right now But you gotta work real hard I know you want it to be easy So let your guard down And I said <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. If you liked this video, please be sure to hit like and subscribe and we'll see you again next weekend for another video. Stay tuned for a live sale where we're going to go through most of this vintage jewelry and a lot of the other vintage items that are shippable that we found in this home. Thanks again, guys. Have a great day.